que se encuentra con los estúpidos, le irá mal. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Hi, Jean. Hi. Hi, doing good. <laughs> Can't wait for this. I'm so excited, Penny. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? Hello. Hey, Penny. Hey, hello. I like your hair, Penny. You know what? It's, uh, um, it's way too stinking hot, and I don't want to put my hair up. Um, so. <laughs> We're gonna rock this, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> How is everybody besides absolutely dying of heat everywhere? <laughs> right. Oh, for Diana. In in the house, I'm hot. I'm I'm in a t-shirt huh? in here because I got the heater on. <laughs> you run hot, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like we have quite a few people hopping on. I'll just give it a few minutes. Five right now. There she is. The real life. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is all. Oh, 
That's really heavy on me. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, we just jumped 11 people in less than 60 seconds, guys. But if you're all okay, I'll just give it a give it a minute here, and then we'll get going. Guys, just checking my chat. Hey, Bree, would you check and make sure everybody's got the login for me? I know you're there. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting because you guys, the connection between our gut and our mind is like mind blowing, huh? Pun intended. But seriously. I'm so excited to do this one, but it's a lot of information. So in order to break up uh, the dialogue a little bit, Brienne from my team is gonna help a little bit. Um, so she will be my co-host. So. Not even like clunk. There we go. So Brie, um, say hi, Brie. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi. Awesome. All right. So if you don't mind, please, everyone go ahead and put yourselves on mute for me and we will begin. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, some of the scientific reasons that the gut and the brain is linked. So now is the perfect time to grab your pen and your pad. And then uh, hopefully if I can do this right, I did practice, um, but if I can do this correctly, I made some graphics and a slide um, so that we can go through some bullet points and Brianne is gonna help us with that part. And then we will be able to, um, you know, at the end we'll do a short Q and A because um, I really do like to answer everyone's questions. So first of all, thank you so much for being here. Yay, I'm so excited to see your fabulous faces. You guys are so awesome. Um, and I want to... Uh, there we go. And Brie, you have... You have go ahead and make it. Because they send to you. So if you don't mind, mute yourselves more. I want to show up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Just because I have a mouth. Sorry, mic. Penny. Could um, Brie just mute everybody? And, yeah. and then you just unmute yourself? Because there's yeah. quite a few that are that with your mic just if, if, if I knew how to do that, um, you know, because I'm still learning. <laughs> do you want to make me host and I can help you with it and see if I can mute them? Yeah, I think. I think she can't because now Brie is host. Pam yeah, is not the Brie, host anymore. Brie's got it. So it's in the settings, Brie. Unless you want. What am I doing? You go ahead, Abby. Do you mind telling her real quick? Or Brie, you cannot. Mute. Can you mute everybody, Brie? And then Penny can just unmute herself because we have a couple unmuted. Especially because I have such a mousy voice, the higher I get, the worse it gets. I'm not sure I know how to do that. 
If you go to video settings, you should be able to do it from there. Also, if you just go to the participants list under the person who has the mic on that you don't see red, the three dots, you can click three dots for each of them and click on mute, mute, mute for each person that is unmuted. I think I did it. Yay, we can be taught everyone. Okay, perfect. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit since we all, have all gotten a little bit settled and we're gonna talk about gut and brain communication. A lot of times you're gonna hear this as um, gut brain access, that's what it's called. Um, so the gut and, and the brain communicate a few different ways. They communicate through our central nervous system. Uh, it's central and, and, and trick nervous systems. That's what links our emotional and our cognitive abilities together. So that's important to know. Um, and then also the gut's uh, microbiota is what it's called. I know, I promise I won't be saying all these big long words, you know, very long, but that communicates through the um, endoc endocrine system. So all of the little microflora that we have in our body kind of sits around the edges of the intestines. And that's how it gets into the nervous system pretty easily that way. So it communicates there. The way that the gut communicates through that system is primarily through gla the glandular system. So it uses your glands in order to get the messages to the brain. So already you can see how important that is, right? Because our glands are super, super, super sensitive. And uh, it's just a system that we don't want to get messed up, right? Because all of the different disorders that come with glandular uh, miss uh, functions, it can be pretty scary. So most of us are familiar with the main way that the gut and the brain communicate, and that's the immune system. That's the one that we hear of most of the time, right? So we know that 80 to 90% of our serotonin's made in our gut. Uh, if our gut isn't properly functioning, then our brain is not going to get that correctly. So then we're missing one of our happy hormones in our brain, and that can affect a whole lot of different kinds of things. Some of the things that we talk about today, you guys might be super, super, super surprised. And then some of you might be like, um, oh, that's what that is. And then others might be like, I don't believe you. So um, I want to preface this by saying that everything that I'm going to tell you is researched, and I do have articles, WebMDs, et cetera. If you need any of those to research for yourself, you can always DM me and I will send you the information because it is really important to make sure you understand what's going on so that you know what's best for your body. Um, I am not a doctor, um, but what I specialize in is taking symptoms and because of understanding how the body works and then how different supplements work, I can typically guide you in a direction that will um, give you a little bit of relief from the symptoms because we're going to focus, we focus on the cause a little bit more. So everything that I talk about is going to be focusing a little bit on the cause, not so much the symptoms. Okay. That's a motto. Treat the cause, not the symptom. If I could put that on everything, that would be like my number one motto. So a strong immune system helps the body resist disease and disorders. That is why a strong immune system is so, so important to us. Um, it detects and responds to different pathogens. Um, pathogens that are released into our body or our immune system, there's two different ways. There's uh, an innate way and an adaptive way. So the innate way is the natural way that your uh, body responds when something is introduced to it. It kind of is able to detect that, organi that organism and it's able to tell if it's healthy or not healthy. Adaptive is something that adapts over time, right? That word's pretty self-explanatory, but this is the system that um, when you get like your vaccines and things like that, that's what you're hoping works in your body is that adaptive immune system. So that's something that can learn as it's uh, responding to that different organism that's put into your body. Nearly all organisms have their own immune systems. Seriously. So 
anything that's going into your body already has its own system, its own immune system. And the goal is that those two meet and they're happy and they're friendly <laughs> and they're not at war with each other. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, what happens a lot of the time because our food, our living situations, et cetera, they aren't uh, in harmony with the way our bodies are built. So we are fighting a little bit. Um, and we don't know why, because sometimes it's kind of subtle. When you start to have health issues, a lot of times we chalk it up to the age you're in, uh, even the sex you are, right? Well, I'm a female. That's just something that happens to me. Or, you know, I'm a mother. So I've had two kids and that's just something that, you know, comes with the territory or I'm menopausal. So, you know, there's a reason for that, you know, clearly that's me. So that's why I keep pulling my hair back and stuff, you know, so you'll know it doesn't matter how low the air is. I'm going to have an issue with my hair down today, but anyway, that's the way that we function, uh, typically, but what I want to challenge you guys to do through this lesson is to think about your body a little differently and really think about any subtle issues that you might have. You're all here because you do that anyway. Um, so congratulations, this might be really cool for you, but, um, also I want you to think about maybe the control that you actually have because 90% of what we go through in our gut is controllable, probably 90 to 95%. So you can fix it. That is the fun fact for that. You can fix it. Uh, and it is wonderful when you do, because you'll feel much, much better. So we're going to talk about the number one issue with gut health, uh, or pathogen organ organism, organism rather that we have an issue with, and that is bacteria. Okay. So when you're balancing the gut, we want to balance the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. But bacteria has a very strong immune system of its own. So it kind of has a little mind of its own. Um, our bodies are able to take in supplements that help balance that bacteria a bit so that it doesn't use whatever is in its environment to either turn bad um, or die, right? Because we don't want good bacteria to die and we also don't want it to become toxic. The good news about supplements and especially the ones that we're gonna go over today and they are Young Living supplements. Um, so this will help you guys and your customers and all your friends. But uh, we are actually able to introduce something into the system that can even take that bad bacteria and help it to heal or help that to die so that the good bacteria can flourish, right? Everyone's heard of like gangrene basically. If you have uh, diabetes and you get a cut on your foot and you get an infection, the seriousness of that is that that infection can continue to grow. And if it grows, it can grow all the way up your leg. You could use your, lose your toe, lose your foot, lose all the way up to your ankle, even to, to your knee, you know, it can be very dangerous. It continues to grow. So we don't want to, allow our system that ability to just produce the bad bacteria. Because the thing is without an immune system, we can't live. So it's really important that we're able to build that back up. Okay, so if you're still with me, this is where it gets kind of fun. All right, so guess what that immune system of bacteria is? You will never guess, so I'm just going to tell you. Enzymes. I know, right? That's the immune system that bacteria has. It's enzymes. What are enzymes? Well, enzymes are naturally produced um, healthy parts of bacteria that help to eat up the toxins and all of the gases that are let off by our food, uh, anything that's in our environment, etc. So we typically are born with enzymes. Our stomach is able to produce a certain amount. That's why mother's breast milk is so important because we're able to match, <laughs> right? <laughs> because we're able to match uh, the baby's enzymes, which gives it the perfect host to build its immune system. Now, as we grow older, I hate to say, we lose the, the ability to make the type of enzymes that we should because that's part of the aging process. The other thing has to do with our environment has to do with the stress that we're in. 
uh, heredity. <laughs> so the heredity part, I hate to say, is nothing we can control. That's just uh, something that we battle, right? So some of us may struggle with inflammation, autoimmune disorders. Others may struggle with, uh, you know, the big C word in their family. Um, we're trying to make sure that we uh, use the correct terms here so that we can stay <laughs> correct. So I will hope you can read, you know, between the lines of some of the things that I tell you guys, but um, others might suffer with physical symptoms or ailments, other disorders that are not internal so much, right? That's the heredity side of it. But as I said before, the good news is with uh, your gut, 90 to 95% of it, we can help. So enzymes protect this is what you can write down. This is the number one thing that we want to remember about enzymes. They protect against infections. That's what they do because they eat up the toxins, the gases, even the food, even the healthy food. We have to, it has to um, assimilate the food in order to disperse the nutrients throughout the body. Okay. So without enzymes, we cannot, we can't protect our bodies from infections. Okay. Now dysfunction of the immune system, we know, as we just discussed a little bit, we have the autoimmune inflammation disorders, um, that horrible C word, right? But an imbalanced um, gut microbiome can also be seen through the central nervous system. So that means uh, anxiety, depressive disorders, things like that, those kind of behaviors, gastrointestinal uh, misfunctions, those behaviors also um, have a lot to do with the central nervous system because that's our brain not getting what it needs to produce what it's supposed to in order to protect us uh, from those things, okay? But here is something that is not super new research, but this is, this is, um, something not talked about. So this is going to be like our mind blowing fun fact, but autism, ADHD, those things are definitely linked to an imbalanced microbiome. That is medical fact. So um, if you guys want some of those journals, again, please send me a DM and I will forward you some of those journals to look at, but that is a medical fact. So we do, you know, we're so fortunate with Young Living that we also have probiotics for kids um, because, you know, we don't think that kids need a lot of supplements, but unfortunately at this time of the world that we live in, it is super important to our bodies uh, and our little baby bodies too, because our food is just not what it should be. And the stresses that we're living in this time of the world is just, uh, a lot more than we've ever seen before, right? So now um, the nervous system uses a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal system, okay? For purposes of this, we're just gonna call it HPA. So I don't have to say that tongue twister like 50 times today. So HPA, <laughs> that is um, activated by stress. Okay, so we know the pituitary gland, right? And we talked about the fact that the um, gut communicates through the glandular system. And that HPA, that is basically our adrenal system gland, right? And when it's activated by stress, it activates the adrenals. The adrenals release cortisol. Cortisol, pretty much all of us are familiar with, is necessary for our bodies to fight or flight but becomes an issue when we freeze and collapse, you know, cause that's the bad side of the adrenal uh, dysfunctioning or not working properly. Um, because next month we're gonna talk about the adrenals. So I won't get into that. We're gonna leave that right there. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I'll behave. Okay. So we have this nervous system like the immune system and it uses two types of pathways also. Now, each pathway that the nervous system uses actually targets a different part of the gut, okay? So, for example, and I have a slide to show you in a minute. Um, so nice to see all the little kids here, by the way. I just love it. I just love it. Squeeze them because mine are grown. So squeeze them while you can. 
and smell their feet when they're little because that goes away real fast. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's see. I lost my place for that. Okay. There we go. Something jumped on my screen here and totally distracted me. Squirrel. Okay, I'm back. So for example, we're going to see how one of these pathways targets the muscle, the inner lining of the gut, and then we'll see how the other part of it targets um, the outside, the organ, uh, and then the uh, cells that are inside. Okay, so we'll see that on a slide that Bree's going to go over with us a little bit later. But this is why we can say there's a link between the gut and the brain because of those things communicating with each other and targeting specific areas of the brain like serotonin and then targeting, targeting specific areas of the gut and the adrenal system that's all in the middle of that, okay? And we do have a couple slides to help you visualize that for visualize learners, which I'm totally not, but I totally love you anyway because um, most of you are. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. So gastrointestinal disorders, what they do is they actually affect more than one third of the population. Can you guys believe that? More than a third of the population with perhaps 10% actually knowing what to do about it. Um, it is a really big issue and something worth investing in. Um, you know, to centralize your immune system and really get it strong enough for you, um, you know, to get past some of your um, health issues that you currently have or disorders that you currently have. So I'm going to try to screen share now and we'll go into a little bit of that really quickly. But um, as I said, besides the genetics, we have a whole lot of control. So keep that in mind as we look at the pictures. I know I can do this. Wait, so somebody has to give me um, control to screen share. This will be fun. Bree is going to love me after this. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There we go. Does that work? Let's see. Yep. Awesome. Here we go. I knew you could do it, Bree. I knew it. Okay. So um, very new to slides. So bear with me. I hope that this makes sense, but just to recap a little bit and no, that's not my stomach. I wish. Let me just put that out there right now because <laughs> I was going to post one of these pictures and my husband's like, um, People are going to think that that's you. And I'm like, I don't think so, but that's all right. I'll choose another photo. So no, it's not me, sadly. But then again, I wouldn't have the roadmap of my life on my stomach to refer to all the fabulous times that I've had if this was my stomach. So we have this gut-brain connection. It's the central and entric nervous systems, endocrine and immune system, those four things. And that is what we call the gut-brain access. So as you can imagine, an imbalanced gut contributes to all kinds of disorders. And here we go. We're going to go into the second, second slide here. And this is what I want you guys to really pay attention to. We have our brain, our lovely picture of our brain. And then, of course, we have our intestinal system, our gut here. So these are the things that affect that healthy balance that we want in our gut. And as you see, most of these we can control with the exception of our genetics, medications, um, supplements. I meant to change that, but I did not. So it still says drugs, but all right. Our environment, exercises, fear, social interaction, stress, cognitive behavior, and food intake. So those are the things that we do control. And what we're going to talk about now are some of the Young Living supplements and what they do in order to uh, support our bodies. So first thing we're going to start with is this cleansing trio. The reason is if we don't cleanse first, then we're just like, you know, running like a mouse on a wheel. You just get a little bit better for a little bit of time and then we fall back into not feeling good and then we get a little better and then we don't. 
you really need to cleanse your system. So your gut, your intestines and your colon. So Brie is gonna talk about um, the next few slides and then we'll um, recap and do some question and answers in the end. Okay. So as Penny was saying, the cleansing trio is a great place to start. Great place to start. Essential Zyme is the has the ingredients we need for better digestion and nutrient absorption, for improved mental clarity and physical activity. Another one of the supplements part of the trio is ICP. Um, it's basically a fiber sponge for the body, absorbing toxins, gases, and minimizing the exposure to harmful substances that our bodies get exposed to. Comfort Tone is the third supplement in the trio, and it helps to purge the colon of toxins, impurities, and impurities that are the most toxic byproducts to the body. Uh, another thing that we like to use is the Digize. Adding Digize Vitality daily if you have or so, are someone who suffers with heartburn. Um, heartburn basically means that there is a severe bacterial imbalance in the gut and the gases work their way up and then causes damage to the esophagus. So um, really quickly before we go on to the next slide, because this is a very common uh, issue heartburn. There are many medications actually for heartburn. And then we even have new disorders coming out that's labeling different types of um, damage that heartburn is actually doing uh, in the system, mainly with the esophagus. So heartburn means that there's severe bacterial imbalance because when you eat food, or you drink something, it goes into the stomach, it starts to break break down correctly. And then your body needs to assimilate or disperse the nutrients. But when it's not doing that, because there aren't enough en enzymes in order to do that, uh, or perhaps we're at a point where our overgrowth of bad bacteria has just taken over, uh, those gases that happen because the food is breaking down slowly, right? There's gases anyway. We all know uh, that we burp and we have other types of gases and bodily functions, uh, et cetera. But when it becomes heartburn, it's because it's uh, turning toxic in your body. So that's what's coming back up and that can cause a lot of damage. Um, so Digize is what we use. Uh, if you're doing this cleanse and you're still having the heartburn because you're cleansing and it's got a balance, please supplement with Digize. Digize is safe for everyone to take, most everyone, let me correct myself, uh, every day anyways, um, several times a day with meals um, because it has wonderful essential oils that are meant to help uh, minimize those gases. Primarily, that's what it does. It works on the gases that you give off, okay? So we will head on to the next slide. There we go. Thanks, Benny. So for daily support, Life9 is a proprietary high potency probiotic that combines 17 billion live cultures from nine beneficial bacteria strains. It helps promote digestion, supports gut health, and helps you maintain normal intest intestinal function for the overall support of a healthy immune system. 30, uh, fast releasing capsules and dual absorbent. Um, this, I don't know what you wrote there. <laughs> <laughs> it's significant. So <laughs> are in every specially made. <laughs> Thanks, Penny. <laughs> are in every specially made bottle that keeps life nine fresh and effective for us. All right, perfect. So, um, so basically a desiccant is a drying agent. So what Life9 helps to do is, um, you know, if anything's wet and getting moldy, we all know what that's like, right? So you have to clean it up, dry it out. And in, in other words, if you've ever lived in a moldy house, uh, you know, the first thing that they have to do is break open everything and let it air out, which means you cannot be there. 
Um, so that's what a desiccant does. The, the Life 9 probiotics are targeted and they're targeted release. So they're actually looking for specific types, the, these active cultures, they're specific cultures looking for some of the toxins and gases that uh, your body normally gives off. And then we also have support for other things like candida um, and other issues like that. So it has that desiccant agent, which helps to dry and shrink um, those things. So we don't have, uh, more of an issue in, in the gut, if that helps. All right. And there we go. Okay. So as Penny was talking about before, now that we know how important gut health is, let's not forget about the kids that we may have or kids in our life. Mighty Pro is a unique synergistic blend of prebiotics and probiotics in a supplement that was specially formulated for children. It's packaged in easy one dose packages that you can take almost anywhere with you on the go. It's this supplement features over 8 billion active live cultures to support digestive, support digestive and immune health in your little ones. Yeah, we can't forget the minis, right? We need our minis. All right, there we go. Okay. Some of it's cut off. So, Penny, hi. I yeah. can't. I can't <laughs> see the full the full thing. So I believe it just talks about um, enzymes being needed, and then of course we have the fun fact. So. Um, essential enzymes. The fun fact is that our body will cease to exist without enzymes, period. Uh, most people are enzyme deficient. Digestion and metabolism depend on enzymes. And we can use the es essential enzymes daily, but essential enzymes four is more for as needed. Uh, heavy meals, irritable bowels, et cetera. And it's an animal-based capsule. So essential enzymes for if you have a high protein diet, uh, that's one of the ones that you'll want to keep uh, stocked as well. But I did want to make sure I put in what the difference is between those two, because essential enzymes for is back in stock. So basically, if you have some issues with digestion, you want to probably use your essential enzymes for. Uh, even with the cleansing trio, you can use that rather than the essential zyme. The other one that you can use is detoxyzyme. And it's important to note that you can use enzymes multiple times a day, uh, before meals and after meals. Always follow the instructions on the bottles or on the packages. Um, a lot of questions I get are, you know, when do I take them and what do I do? And yes, for specific disorders, um, there's protocols for them, but for the most part, make sure that you follow everything that's on the packaging. It keeps it nice and easy for us. Young Living has done all of the research in order to make sure that we have the proper information that keeps it safe for most everyone. Everybody's bodies are different, but for most everyone. Ningxia Red. This is one of my favorite drinks. So if you haven't tried this incredible juice yet, Ningxia Red is a powerful superfood drink that is absolutely delicious. It contains a whole Ningxia wolfberry puree, the highest antioxidant fruit on the planet. Antioxidants are key, are key in co combating free radicals that our bodies produce and are closed to daily. Free radicals cause disease and degeneration of the body. Ningxia Red has an antioxidant orca level of 25,300 as compared to blueberries, which are at a level of 2,400. It is a whole body nutrient infusion for health and wellness support. When you order like your starter kit, there'll be two samples of this drink for you to try in the compartment underneath your oils. One suggestion is throw it in the fridge before you give it a try. 
I did not do that. And I didn't love it at first because it's not as good as when it is warm. So throw it in the fridge before you give it a try for a few hours. Um, I will add um, lemon vitality or lime to it as well. And ice with usually some sparkling water. And be sure to use a glass cup and a metal straw when adding oils to your drinks um, or toss it. And you can even toss the packets if you're using the packets in the freezer for a delicious treat on these hot days. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And these um, antioxidants, the reason that you would want to take it daily um, is because you're helping the, the, the cells stay uh, stable. And because you're doing that, you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to balance out uh, your, your gut a little bit faster. Um, along with that, uh, most of us uh, battle the oxidative stress. And because of that, uh, this is critical. Um, antioxidants are critical to maintaining that balance. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about really quickly is the mineral essence that goes with this because as we've done the slides, it's important to note that we did it kind of in order. So you wanna cleanse your system and then you have these daily things that you can take every day to help keep it balanced and thriving. Um, but you can't absorb any nutrients unless you have a balanced um, mineral system. So this is really important because almost every single disorder can be linked to a mineral deficiency of some sort. And that is for real. So it is very important that you're taking minerals also, um, the different types of trace minerals that we have. Our mineral essence, for those of you who know um, and have tried it, it's just not the best tasting thing. But minerals are not, they never will be because they're coming from the earth and the rocks and different other things. So they're just not going to taste well. But a lot of people will put their um, mineral essence into their ningxia, uh, which you can do. The ningxia in, is not going to compromise any of the minerals and the minerals will not compromise any of the um, nutrients that are in the ningxia. I personally um, dislike the taste so much that I have to take it like a shot. So I use the Vitality oils, um, the electrolytes, and I put it in a shot glass and then I'll add some mineral water with that. And I will just take it in a shot glass, add a little bit more mineral water to the shot glass and make sure that I get what sits at the bottom because it's very thick. Make sure you shake, shake, shake it um, pretty well. And then uh, it's not so bad for me. That's what I do. I'm not sure if you guys want to share any of, any of the ways you take it. But after our mineral, mineral essence, we'll talk a little bit about our multigreens. Oh. Multigreens boost energy and vitality by working with the glandular and ner glandular nervous and circulatory system. This is coupled with a purifying essential oil blend that boosts blood absorption. 64% in 30 minutes and 86% in one hour. This is because cells are now able to receive the nutrients that they were not able to absorb and assimilate or disperse before. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. If you aren't taking the multigreens, I don't know if they're in stock right now because I did think that they were out of stock. This is like life-changing for you. Um, this is blood purifying multigreens from active C veggies. It is awesome. So just to simplify it so you can help your customers, basically it, we are eating what the fish eat, right? And we all know how good fish is for us. Um, we are eating what the fish eat. And when we do that, we're going to the source. So we're getting a lot more support that way. And in the essential oils desk reference, if you have that, that is where this information is from. I can give you that reference off the top of my head. Uh, once Young Living added this purifying essential oil blend, it boosts the absorption. 64% 30 minutes and 86% in an hour. That's awesome. For me personally, I noticed the benefits of taking the multigreens within a week. 
typically that doesn't happen for my type, my body type, um, struggling with autoimmune disorders um, or, or battling those things. It typically takes me a lot longer. For most of these things, it takes three to six months for your body to able, be able to balance and six months before you start seeing a difference, six months to a year before you have healed the ailment. Yes, doing things naturally just takes longer, but it is so worth it when you give your body what it needs. So check out your essential oils desk reference if you have it. Um, it's the, mine is the newer version from Life Science. Um, if you guys don't have that desk reference, it is awesome. You can pretty much find any of our products in there and what they do. Um, I always do the supplemental research also uh, with the medical journals and, and the other um, references because I want to see how it adds up. So what I'm giving you is, is that the information that is proven that you can actually re resource uh, suppl supplementary. So um, on top of doing these, doing it through our resources. All right. And that's that. Thank you, Brie. You are awesome. I made, I made her do this with me. So no. <laughs> All right. There we go. Um, yay. Okay. Perfect. So that is the basics. I know. <laughs> there's so much more i wish i could tell you guys but it's all we're already at our 45 minute mark but um you know you can always dm me we can always talk and um oh is the desk reference discontinued <gasps> they might be doing something new hmm sorry i just saw that comment um but i would love to do a little bit of q a and Bree's going to help me out with that as well um rather than calling on person by person please post your question and I will be able to help and respond as um, well as I can. We had a question, Penny. Um, do we have to keep life nine in the fridge? Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Very easy. So here's why I really want to tell you why though, because this is a big deal. Um, those are live cultures. So they um, need to be cold. Why though, is it not cold when it is shipped to you? Ha ha, fun fact, because it's not activated until you pop the seal. That air will activate it. So it has to go into the refrigerator after. And that's for most probiotics you find everywhere, the exception of uh, some spore-based probiotics, which ours are, are spore-based for the most part. So, um, but in, I still would put them in the refrigerator. Like most everything goes in the refrigerator for me. Like it's like two shelves of stuff for me. <laughs> All right. And there was another question. What's the difference between ICP and ICP daily? Um, it's going to be strength. That is your main difference. So the ICP, um, and you know what? I think Abby, if Abby's still on here, she takes the ICP daily. I do believe that the ICP um, that we take in the cleansing trio is definitely a lot stronger and it's not, it doesn't have any inulin fiber. The ICP daily has the inulin fiber. Um, what that is, is the vegetable fibers. So that is a natural fiber that's less bloating. Um, when you're taking the cleansing trio, you can take the fiber that is primarily psyllium based, psyllium husk based. Uh, because you're taking other things with it, it's not sitting in your system long enough to really keep you bloated. But ICP daily has the inulin fiber that helps it to uh, not retain as much water. So you don't get that uncomfortableness of the fiber. Um, off the top of my head, that is the, the main difference. But uh, Abby, if you wanted to talk about it a little, if you take it, go ahead and chime right in. I know she loves that. Oh, she did. Okay. So Abby says, Oh, well, I went to grab it. I, yeah, it kind of makes you go to the bathroom a little bit more. Um, it, it, one of the things that I find is that, um, you want to really, um, shake it up. So I get like a Mason jar and I shake it up because you want it to be really mixed well. Um, and that's hard, but yeah, I think it, it, it's definitely something that you have to be consistent with too. Yeah. So it, the fibers are what helps get all of the stubborn, uh, stuff out of the intestines, but primarily what that is for is for the colon. 
um, the ICP or any fiber that you take is for the colon because if you think about everything that's going through your intestinal system and then out through your colon, once it hits your colon, it's broken down and anything and everything that can be used to benefit <clears throat> your body has already been dispersed. So what's left is really bad and you don't want that in your system like at all. So if it's sticking in the walls in there and if it's building up, um, it's definitely creating a bad bacteria there and bacteria can grow in all different directions, even up. So that's something to uh, really think about if you need the fiber. Okay. And we have another question. Do we need a, do we need a prebiotic along with life nine? I have a friend with other companies who asked me why life nine doesn't have a prebiotic since ours doesn't. And I'm not sure what to say. There is no scientific evidence that you need a prebiotic. Basically, it's like um, going to war and sacrificing your first two lines of people, right? Like in the old days when they used to walk with like lines of people towards the other, uh, the other country with lines of people. And you knew that the first two lines of people were basically sacrifices. That's what prebiotics are. They're sacrifices. So what what the theory is behind prebiotics is that you're throwing in the prebiotics so that your body's, uh, that basically the acidity is going to kill them off. And then that bacteria is going to die, those gases, those toxins, and then the prebiotics or the probiotics rather will be stronger. But with um, Life9 specifically, they are targeted. If you were to look at the ingredients on Life9, I don't know if I have a bottle with me here. Nope. Um, we have several different strains. So for example, L strains, R strains, B strains, those different strains do different things. R strains of probiotics are targeted towards female issues. Um, Ramos is probably the uh, biggest one for females. You have lactobacillus and you have the bi um, biobacterium, the bifidobiobacterium, right? So those, those two are primarily the, the number one things that you'll see everywhere. And you have A strains also like acidophilus, uh, which deals mostly with the stomach. So ours are targeted towards very specific types to cover a whole lot of different kinds of bacteria versus one type of bacteria if that helps. So although we only have 17 billion probiotics, because that was a big thing for me, I thought, oh, you know, I take hundred billion probiotics when I'm not doing well, if I'm having, if I can feel myself doing a flare up or something like that. And still, sometimes you may need to do that. You may need a higher bacteria um, or a high, yeah, a higher good bacteria amount to balance out something if you've been suffering for a long time. But primarily our probiotics are life nine is for um, everyday daily use to cover all different types of bacteria and prebiotics are not necessary because of that. Okay. Can you take supplements while cleaning your system? Yes. Um, however, <laughs> it depends on what kinds of supplements. So, and when you take them. Um, we all do a little bit of cleansing every day anyways, right? So that's kind of what our body does when we go to sleep is it starts to repair and it starts to cleanse. So yes, you can take supplements, but unless you know what specific supplements you need, it's kind of not worth it at that time because you're not going to get the amount that you need uh, if you're in a cleansing, if you're, if you're cleansing. And then what you can actually do is distract your body from cleansing in order to break down and assimilate those um, nutrients. So that would be specific to specific uh, case if that, if that helps you a little bit. And um, you know, if you guys need help with that, you can always send me um, personal DMs. Does Ningxia have green tea, natural caffeine, or only the zinc and nitro? Um, the zinc and nitro, I believe it can somebody else back me up on that. I believe it's the zinc and the nitro. Um, yep. I think Sam answered that question in the chat. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Was I right, Sam? Yeah. Right on. Cool. Hit me again. What else do we got? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm I reading through them. Good. All right. And yeah, Sam uh, answered Liz's question also. That's that's correct. So, all right. Can we take the ICP alone, or do you need the trio? Um, the ICP, you can take it, but then you want to really focus on the daily. The cleansing trio, they go together um, to help balance out a little bit. So I do the cleansing trio every quarter. So probably every seasonal change is when my body's like, what's happening? I just got used to the heat. What are you doing to me? Or I just got used to the cold. What are you doing to me? So I always uh, take the time at that time to do the cleansing trio, um, which is if you guys have never done the cleansing trio, it's a really awesome. You can take the ICP by itself if you know you need fiber, but I would definitely go to the daily and not the um, regular ICP. So someone asked, every time I take a probiotic, it makes me feel nauseous after a few days of taking that. Why does this happen? And does life nine probiotic make you feel like that? 99.9% .9 of probiotics are dairy based. Yep. I know it's madness. So, um, dairy based. Now what happens is we're taking uh, cow, even, even goat, uh, dairy based probiotics that are supposed to go to little baby animals. And we're putting those into our grown bodies. So that is an issue because some of those strains we really don't need. So it's going to upset your stomach. Um, it, 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 it just does. And that's one of the reasons why people don't take probiotics is because of that, um, response, their body's response to the probiotics. Um, life nine is spore based is dairy free. So it should not have that effect. However, everybody's body is a little bit different. Um, you may have a disorder that could be, um, you know, uh, adding to that as well. So I, but I would definitely give life nine a try. And how do you take life nine? I follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Follow the instructions, but with water. So one thing that was a really good question because one thing, um, to think about enzymes, probiotics, um, they're water soluble, which means you need water to activate them. So you need to take them with water. If you're taking it with coffee, you are killing it. I had to learn that the hard way because that was my jam. Was like, yeah, probiotics. Yeah. Enzymes. I'm, I'm doing awesome. I'm taking it with my coffee and I feel nothing. <laughs> and after researching that, I'm like, oh man. So if you do, uh, with probiotics, a lot of companies, and this is like 50, 50, there's like a, a little bit of a debate, nothing's proven, but, um, most probiotic companies will tell you to do it in the morning because you're setting your body up. Right. But for some of us, we are still struggling in the morning to fix what we did yesterday. And then for some of us who have other diet types of, uh, autoimmune disorders, our body's like a week back. So we're not, we're, we're not able to get to yesterday yet. So in that case, um, when that happens, you want to make sure, um, you want to make sure that you're giving it, you know, the best chance of, of survival and make sure you take your water with it and activate it well. All right. What else do we got? What's the best time of day to take life nine? <laughs> yeah. So that is dependent on you. Uh, for me, I take my probiotics in the evening. Um, my body takes longer to recover than most. Um, one thing I would like to say you guys can look into if you have issues primarily in the morning, if you're not a breakfast person or you're not hungry in the morning, or you still feel full, or you still feel that way in the morning. Um, you might need to fast a little bit longer than just the amount of time that you sleep. Um, every, everyone knows that it's, it's known that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but when you have breakfast, 
can be very different depending on your personal body needs. So for me, I do not eat anything in the morning. Uh, unless I'm hungry, then I'm going to eat. But for the most part, my body is still recovering. So it's, I'm going to be liquid. So I'm going to do water until I feel a little bit better. And then I'll do a little bit of coffee. And unfortunately I like that awful coffee, make cream. I believe in an 80, 20 rule, just so you know. So <laughs> I'm going to take that awful coffee, make creamer. All right. But I gave up the Starbucks lattes <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I'm going to take that creamer but I'm going to try to keep it to liquids, um, until I start to feel, um, you know, less heavy and like, I'm a little bit hungry. And so don't force your body. If it's something that isn't for you and don't feel guilty because you didn't eat anything. And your husband is starving at five and he can eat all night and all day and look the same. And he's desperately trying for you to eat the muffin that he got you and the omelet that he made you because <laughs> my husband can cook. So that's my life. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. I know you're on here too. Okay. So, um, don't feel bad. Do what you have to do for your body. So you feel best. I think we're good, Penny. Oh, uh, I did see a question about regular ICP and how often to take it. Um, you can, uh, you know what, let me research that. So if you don't mind, go ahead and send me, um, a DM. And I'll do the research for you on that one because I haven't taken the ICP daily uh, ever. My body doesn't respond well to fiber. Uh, I retain water anyways. So I don't do the fiber a lot and I definitely don't do it without the cleansing trio. So let me do a little research for you. We have a couple more questions that came in. Why does the Ningxia cause me to have body aches and I often wake up the next day with puffiness? Yeah. Um, that sounds like Jamie, uh, question from Jamie. Yeah. Jamie, you and I got to talk. Was that you? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> <me>. yeah. <laughs> I love it too. And I'm like, man, this stuff tastes amazing. I know it's so good. And I was like, I'm going to put this in here and you, you're going to know it's me. <laughs> that is so funny. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That is so funny. So, um, yes, but if you are like, like that, and you do have seem to have a reaction with that, um, it's probably because of the fruit and the citrus and it's going to make you puffy and it's going to make your body, um, the, the acidity in your body, um, flare up and those kind of things or allergies. Cause a lot of times we have allergies to those things. Um, that is shown in the skin. That's the first place that you tend to see those besides the way you feel in your stomach. One of the things that you can do to counteract that is green juice, celery oh. juice. Yeah. Green juices. You want to balance the acidity with the enzymes. Now you can take enzymes before Ningxia as mm -hmm. well and oh. after. Um, so something to think about, but don't take the detoxyzyme. I would definitely say probably the essential zyme before. And if you're having an issue after, take your essential zymes for after or okay. your detoxyzyme before you go to bed if you're waking up like that. Yeah, because I do the detoxyzyme every night before bed and I drink celery juice almost every morning. And I'm just like, I know this stuff is amazing. Why is my body not want to you know, it just, it, it gets really angry in my joints after I have it. And it's so frustrating. So yeah. I'm like trying to, trying to figure out what I need to balance to make it acceptable to my system. So. Make sure you add the enzymes in before you take it or after okay. you take it or both and play with it a little bit. Um, okay. I do know a lot of people that have struggled with that, even like wine, because the sulfates in wine and, you know, the fruit of the wine and things like that, but the enzymes should help. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we have a few more, Penny. Sure. So no probiotics with a fruit smoothie, just water. Um, no, you can take the probiotics, but honestly, if you want the best, um, response, look, cause we can do what we want. Right. But if you want the best response, yeah, it's going to be water. It's definitely going to be water. Um, you have to think of the acidity you're putting in your body. That's actually breaking down with your probiotic. So you don't want your body to focus on too much at one time. In other words, 
um, we have to kind of baby our body a bit, at least if it's off balanced. Um, kind of like Jamie was saying, you know, she's very good with her diet and she's very thoughtful about what she does. And, and there's just something missing in the middle. So we don't want to give our body too much at one time to have to deal with. Um, because most of the time it's gonna, it's like a fire, right? If you see smoke and fire, you're going to go to the fire and not the smoke. That's kind of what happens. So if we have food in our stomach, our body's going to go into digestion mode. So now we're losing that recovery <clears throat> and that, um, you know, that focus that the body has to break down what it needs and then disperse the nutrients. In other words, does this work equally well with IBS issues as well? Oh, IBS is one of my funnest things to talk about ever that, you know, that I think we might have to do, um, whoever that was might need to, um, send me a message, but yes. Um, so IBS, Irritable bowel sy syndrome, um, which is a very real thing, um, it happens because of an imbalance that has spread to pockets in different parts of your colon or your intestine, um, even damage some of the stomach lining. Um, because of that, uh, you have, your body is, it's like having a cut on your hand. And even if you put like uh, soap in it, in that cut, it's going to burn and it's going to irritate that cut that's on your hand. That's kind of how IBS is. So what's most important is, is trying to heal that. And yes, the probiotics are essential for healing that, um, depending on what else you struggle with would depend on what else you might need to help yourself with. So that might be an individual question, um, to answer. Okay, um, what do we got? How long before we eat should we take enzymes? Mm, most of the time, they'll tell you an hour before, um, just to give it time if you're taking it before. And if it's afterwards, you can do it right away. Okay. And which product did you mention that, mention that helps with candida? Uh, candida cannot be cured unless you change your diet. I will just tell you that. Um, it cannot be cured. It can be controlled, but it cannot be cured. So, uh, life nine specifically has some R strain bacteria. Um, those R strain bacteria help with, uh, female issues like candida. Uh, we say it's female because primarily in 90% of people, it is female, but it can be in male as well, but it's primarily female. Um, if you want to research our strain bacteria, you'll see there, there's quite a few of them, but there's uh, several that are in most um, women's probiotics that'll be labeled women's. Um, but because Life9 covers a balanced amount of different types of bacteria, we do have strains in there for that. Would you take essential zymes or essential zymes for, for IBS? Um, you need to take your, uh, essential zymes every day and then essential zymes for when you're having an issue, um, or you eat something heavy, or if you eat too late in the evening, essential zymes for has more support to break down primarily protein faster. Um, if that helps, I would honestly say I would take detoxyzyme, uh, instead. I think that is all, unless we get some more questions. Would you take it every day? Every single day and more than once. Absolutely. Guys, you can't get enough enzymes. So if you take, um, for example, like a detox enzyme, you would have to take like um, five pounds of spinach, for example, to get the amount of enzymes that only part of that capsule has. It's a lot. We cannot eat enough green foods. And primarily that's where we get our enzymes from. It's going to be from green foods and who likes green foods. I mean, yeah, we'll eat it, especially if we go out to a fancy restaurant and it's on the plate and you know, you paid for it, but who actually cooks the right amount of green foods every day? Nobody. And if you do hats off. Okay. Matter of fact, I'll send you a free oil if you do. So send me a message. <laughs> and that is why we struggle so much, right? Cause we just don't do it. Um, 
it's very difficult. And even then it, green foods are scary. We've, we've had outbreaks of sickness because of spinach and because of romaine and because of different green things. And, and it is dangerous to buy green veggies in bags uh, without any sort of, you know, airing out of that, um, that vegetable because all those gases are let off in the bag and then it goes back into the food and we're eating that. So then it gets to our stomach and now we have gases upon gases upon gases and your body's like, are you kidding me, lady? Like, you know, broccoli's hard enough, but wow, it was in a bag too. So now I have to deal with that. Like there's a whole lot of uh, study on that. So um, if you guys have any specific questions, please, please, please send me a message because I would love to talk to you, um, you know, and do as much as I can. Another question. Should you take the green supplements if your body produces too much iron? Yep, because it's not iron focused. The multigreens are not iron focused. They are blood cleansers. Those C focused veggies are to cleanse your blood. So yes, it actually might help your iron um, a little bit. I think Liz knows a little bit about that. I don't know, Liz, if you wanted to speak up maybe a little. Do you, I, I think I talked to you a little bit about iron before. No, I don't think that was me. Iron. Mm -mm. Anybody has, have I talked? I'm so sorry, Liz. Hey, oh, it's vitamin D. You and, I, you and I talked about vitamin D. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Who did anybody want to speak maybe with iron? Anybody have any experience with that? I can't. Uh, with iron, right? Well, yeah. like I've always had a hard time absorbing iron, but I don't know if it's um, related. I don't know how it's, I don't understand the, how it's related to B12 because I always get a specific B12 that I need to take. Um, but I realized that my iron was always low and B12 too. So I was taking the sulfurzyme and um, Ningxia together. And I I never in my life had um, regular regular levels of iron before taking that. So I don't know what Ningxia did or if it was sulfurzyme, but the combination of the two was the only thing I did different ever that actually um, increased my levels, it, my iron levels, because it didn't matter if I ate meat or not. It wasn't I wasn't absorbing iron mm -hmm. all my life. I've been I was like that until I do that when I do that combination, then I can tell a big difference. Mm. The only thing that it could do, um, if you're taking greens and you have a diet of a lot of greens, what you really need to be worried about is calcium, overloading your body with calcium, not, not necessarily iron. Um, iron is one of those things that's kind of uh, hereditary too. Uh, it really is. So the anemia part of that, that at least, um, having too much iron, um, like I said, the chlorophyll, the choline, those things actually help to cleanse your blood and help you balance that out a little bit. Um, I did see a question a little bit about uh, detoxyzyme. Um, so the difference with detoxyzyme, and I might, nope, I totally don't have any of those things in here. Isn't that great? I should have thought about that. I should have thought about that. So detoxyzyme has, give me one second, because I'm going to pull it up so I don't mess I don't mess this up. Let me pull up the ingredients and then I can tell you what it does. So I'm kind of that person. When I look at the ingredients, I can tell you everything about the product. So when I go to a store or something, I just turn it over and I look at the ingredients and then I can tell you what that product does. I don't need to look at the label or any of that. Uh, because the labels are, it's all sales focused. It has nothing really to do with what the product actually does for you. Okay, so here's a little bit of the difference in detoxyzyme. You're getting um, the enzymes that help with joint support too, because you're getting your, you know, there's a lot of uh, buildup around the joints for some of us. So that fluid, uh, edema, things like that, you have a little bit more support to break down um, those things in the body. If you are somebody that struggles with inflammation, detoxyzyme will probably be your, your favorite best friend, like it is mine. It's 
not necessarily stronger. It just has um, a different type of um, enzyme in it. All right. Yay. I think we did good. There we go. We did an hour. I was so nervous, you guys. Like it, there's just so much information. I can be so long winded. I was like, I got to keep this to an hour, right? I can't do this two hour thing to everybody all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, again, I just want to thank you all so much. It's so wonderful to see all these wonderful faces and I see some new faces. So welcome. It's so nice to see you. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to talk about the adrenal glands next month. And what we're going to focus on are the facts and the myths. Uh, well, this is my world. So I will tell you, um, <laughs> there's a lot of controversy right now between the term adrenal fatigue in the healthcare world, like doctors and herbalists and uh, certified, uh, supplementalists like myself are seriously battling that term adrenal fatigue. And a lot of it has to do with, I'll oh, just a little teaser for next month with the way the adrenals function, um, scientifically what we can see and what we prove and the way that adrenal glands respond to different things uh, for different people. It's the autoimmune response with it. So there's quite a bit of controversy with that. So I'm excited to dig in a little bit. That is primarily what I battle. So I have, um, something called Atkinson's, which is a cortisol issue, uh, autoimmune cortisol issue. Um, and it's very rare, <laughs> go figure. So <laughs> I've had to deal with that uh, autoimmune disorder. Um, but um, you know, for the past 10 years, I haven't had flare ups and stuff with autoimmune issues and stuff. So it's been wonderful. So I don't know if I even have it anymore, which is kind of cool when you can reverse some of these things. All right, you guys, I just wanted to say hi to everyone. I'm looking through the things and I don't know. Hi. Oh, my sister's on. Hi, Adriana. My mom is hi, on. Penny. Oh my goodness. Hi, Ma. She's not going to say hi. I know it. She probably <laughs> bounced off. She's like, great. She highlighted me. I'm out of here. That's my spiritual ma. Um, but she's my mom, you know. Who else do we got on here? How cool. Penny, I just wanted to say, I wanted to say thank you so thank much. You. Like it's amazing the the wealth of knowledge that you have is absolutely incredible so thank you so much for sharing um all you got to all you had to share with us today also the class um for next month it's going to be on the 26th 26th of july so about eight o'clock eastern standard time again same zoom link um of course check out penny's page and she'll have information there of course over in the oak tribe for our team um it'll also be posted over there for our, our july events so um thank you so much penny and thank you guys like it's so wonderful to see everybody here i absolutely love and i can tell we had almost 90 participants so 90 cool. participant participants which means so many people love this class and it's so so valuable so I mean, thank you. Thank you. A, lot, a lot of information. And I thank you for bearing with me and Brie. Um, very new to making slides, but it is a personal goal of mine um, to try to sum up the information a little bit to, to help. So I appreciate everyone's patience with us. Didn't go as smooth, but we're learning. So by the sixth one, it's going to be like super smooth. And thank you, Sam, for helping and Abby and everyone. You guys are also awesome. Good night, Australia. Thanks, Penny. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. Bye. Bye. Good Thanks, night. Bye. Bye, 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 everybody. Bye. Bye, mommy. Thank you. See you, everybody. You're awesome, Penny. You're awesome, Guapa. You're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> oh, I was so nervous. We'll have this battle if you want. <laughs> I know, huh? I was so nervous for this one because there's, it's just, there's yeah. so much info and I didn't want to not get it right for everyone because this is a big Aww. issue like everything starts there you know so i was yeah, like oh, yeah hey, yeah help me, do, help me do it right so nah, amazing and brie did awesome too thank you brie you're Aww, the best. i want to hug you <laughs> I big hug. 
she's so great she did so well i was very happy to yeah. her hi amy Who hey guys hi, leah hi. hi leah good night diana bye <laughs> esther my hubby's still on there hi hubby thank you penny thank everyone. you <laughs> good night thank you, penny. Hi, Diana. Hi, Z. Good night, girls. Good night. Oh, Diana, so good to hear your voice. Yudi, hi, Yudi. Hey there. <laughs> Great job. Oh. <laughs> Don't get me nervous for next month. <laughs> I know you're my helper next month, huh? Oh, Brie with my <laughs> guinea pig. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it better next month. Every time I'm gonna get better. I promise. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, all right. Love you girls. Bye. Love you guys too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.